What's up, peers, and welcome back to the World Crypto Network here at the Understanding Bitcoin Conference in Malta. And I'm joined here by Kevin Lowak, a cool Bitcoin entrepreneur and organizer of a bunch of cool Bitcoin events. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Kevin, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks. Thanks for inviting. Um... Yeah, so I don't know what I should say now. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's the point where you, where you awkwardly give back the microphone to me so that I can phrase a question that is actually how I, sh how I should do it. So, <laughs> um, so Kevin, of course, uh, here we're at Understanding Bitcoin, right? And, and you as a conference organizer always have, I think, a, a unique point of view on, on these events. Uh, so just what do you think about this? Uh, what, how did you like the people that were here, the speakers, and how was organized and everything? All right, so this one is a new conference. Um, and I think the idea, the original idea, actually, I don't know who had it, uh, if it's Giacomo or Tone. Um, but the original idea was that um, they wanted to have a conference that was less technical. And on Bitcoin right now, like all the Bitcoin conferences are very different from the uh, altcoins or shitcoins conferences in the, in the sense that the target is not really the you know mainstream person or the investor or the new dev that's interested about new things, uh, most of the Bitcoin conferences are like super technical. So the oldest ones like uh, scaling or stuff like that are still pretty technical. So if, you, if you're not working on Bitcoin, um, it's getting really, really tough to, to understand things. And I just wanted to show, you know, how to use a wallet, how to, well, they also went really far, like how to use a Blockstream satellite, um, how to do mesh, uh, mesh transaction or SMS transactions. So, all right. Um, that was the, I think the idea was just to show how to use Bitcoin um, in different ways. And also tomorrow they have the workshop. So that's also part of the deal, right? It's letting people ask questions and be helped. Um, so that's a very, very different things. Um, and you were asking about the attendees as well. So I've been really surprised that, let's say, I know about 50% of the people, I guess. So 50% of the attendees would be the you know, old school uh, Bitcoiners that go to all the conferences. Uh, and the other 50%, um, either I don't know them or they are just the new people. So I think this is very interesting to see because most, like let's say the 50% that we know um, already know about most of these tools. Um, so they're coming more for, I guess, the networking and all that. And this is very important, especially in an intimate setup like this conference. Um, so yeah, it was cool even for people like us. Um, yeah, very, very much so, right? And it's, of course, like we, like the, the Bitcoin is we're on all these events and we know each other, right? And it's good for us just to, to come here and to talk and to discuss and to hash out ideas, maybe uh, build new businesses and business partnerships, right? So there's definitely this aspect as well. And for example, I never watch these talks and, and you neither uh, because first there's a recording, right? Uh, and then again, also because, for example, like how to use a wallet. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, right? Uh, but the opportunity cost of not talking to the people and not engaging and as you said, the networking is of course huge. Um, and the, then on the other hand side, right, the 50 new people have the opportunity not just to have these talks um, and can then ask questions directly afterwards, uh, but they can also ask these questions to all the uh, like OGs, so to say, in the space. And I think, uh, yeah, I think that's quite nice. Um, but Giacomo said uh, at the closing ceremony that um, they might change for the future that they have a more clear schedule of what is what skill level uh, so what do you think about that idea um yeah i think it, it would be useful but also I, I don't think they were really clear themselves on on what really was the plan and i think they switched a few things uh just by seeing what kind of people were attending so you could see that even the very first panel like the opening panel today was about uasf right this is definitely not a user-friendly or newbie friendly talk um uasf is like what, two years ago? So if you're new, <laughs> you probably haven't heard of it. And, uh, and even if you were just the normal, you know, basic Bitcoin users, UASF for you is not much. So I think they already had a lot of different levels. Um, and maybe uh, clarifying that uh, is important. Maybe even having a few stage, right, for different level. And then you can, you can switch if, you, if it's too much for you or not enough for you. Yeah. Yeah, very much so, right? And I think both having different stages, uh, that, that will be very nice. Um, and I think that goes hand in hand with then the workshops later, right? And, and the hands-on experience. Because yes, we can talk about Bitcoin all day long, but eventually we want to do something with it, right? And that's also for, for the newbies. If they just hear and just have the verbal input, yeah, they might get a thing or two, but when you actually download a wallet, you actually write down the seed, you actually get your few Satoshis um, or maybe like check signatures or whatever it is, right? Then it's much more tangible. Uh, so I, I very much are, are looking forward to the workshops tomorrow and seeing how these hands-on experience are. 
Um, but, but so where do you see here the difference between having presentations and hands-on workshops? All right. Um, presentations, like for an event like this, I think presentations are good for people who are pretty much scared or have never ever touched Bitcoin. Um, so seeing it the first time without having to deal with your own computer and being like, oh my God, I don't understand how to use a command line. Um, yeah, maybe that's good for the beginning um, because if you do directly a workshop and I mean, you would be surprised where we are running some in, in Lisbon. Um, the, the workshops, like some people have never opened a command line before. Um, some people, you know, they, they barely know how to do, you know, copy pasting some of them. And they're like, yeah, I want to use Bitcoin, but it's really hard to have people of the same level and, and level of understanding. Um, so maybe lectures are not a bad idea before the workshops. Um, now you can argue with that because for sure, if you are here to do things, sitting down for eight hours, just listening to lectures uh, on a actually, you know, demo type setup. So you just are looking at people installing a wallet or something, which was the case um, today. Um, I don't know. It feels weird, but maybe for some people it work out. Yeah, again, right. I think here we really have to differentiate between uh, the, the OGs and the newbies because uh, right, um, if, if you know how a wallet works, you don't really want to watch uh, the wallet install. But then on the other hand, for example, um, I forgot his name, Fernando or something, he showed how, to, how you can securely download uh, Bitcoin Core, how you can check this, uh, verify the checksum and the signatures and everything. And, and um, there, like, for example, some minor details, like for uh, like unzipping the file, like what exactly are you actually doing and, and what does this specific letter in this command do? Like I had no clue about this, right? Of course you unzip a lot of files, but you never really exactly know what works. So I think even for these very basic functions, so to say, then still adding a lot of details um, is, uh, I would say, also beneficial for those that are already a bit more experienced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, so I don't know what I learned because I, as you know, as I said, I wasn't there for most of the things. Uh, there was one funny one that I attended, which was uh, the Trezor um, demo about using two different Trezor on an Electrum um, for multisig. And so it was Stick uh, that was doing the presentation, I think. So Stick was asking, um, you know, so who has used Electrum? And I know, you know everybody has used Electrum. Um, who has used, you know, a Trezor with Electrum. Okay, so first you need a Trezor uh, and then you need to use it with Electrum. That's already much harder. And it was like, who has used, you know, like multisig with different hardware on Electrum. And I think there was one guy in the whole room and that was not me. So it, it, would, not, if not, it, it would not even cross my mind. And I do quite a few things with Bitcoin, um, but I would never have thought of doing that, right? Um, I know I'm not even sure if it makes sense uh, in the first place, but you know that's some things. Yeah, you can learn even if uh, if you've been there for a while. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. And it's it's very difficult to thus anticipate as an organizer what level should we touch, right? Because and and what niche? Because Bitcoin is so broad, and and with every subject you can talk about hours and hours and really drill down into the details until like no one knows what the hell we're doing, right? Uh, so I, I guess it's really difficult to find the sweet spot. Um, and well, I guess that's the main challenge for, for an organizer, right? And so, of course, you are an organizer as well. We have uh, down there, building on Bitcoin, for example, the back down, uh, down there. Uh, and you are tinkering on a, a new, well, uh, yeah, new uh, conference. Uh, so what would you tell us a bit about uh, the Breaking Bitcoin 2019? Yeah, so, uh, so we had the Breaking Bitcoin in 2017 in Paris. Um, and we are just, you know, switching every other year with building. Uh, so building will be next year and breaking is this year in Amsterdam, uh, early June, 8th and 9th. Um, so for us, it's easier because level wise, we're just going hardcore. So the review committee is about how good and relevant uh, your talk is relating to security only. So also we are, we are choosing a very strict vertical. So it has to be security. Um, and um, yeah, so the most technical and novel um, your talk is, the more chances you have to be selected as a speaker. Um, so it, it does, the level does depend on the amount of submissions we have. Um, this year we have a lot of them. So I can tell you already that the technical level of the conference will be higher uh, than the first breaking and then building. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, so I was asked actually today a few times, 
um, would it be recommended for a newcomer or somebody that has been using Bitcoin but doesn't really care about the, the you know, understanding it or development side of it? Um, and my answer was that nobody in the room is expected to understand all the talks. That's the whole point of breaking Bitcoin. Breaking Bitcoin is about opening your minds about all the different vectors of attack. And you cannot be an expert in all of them. So even if you're like one of the core devs, you might not know about the side channels on hardware wallet, or you might not know about the networking attacks, or you might not know about some weird economics that miners have incentives to delay your block. You know, you have some, a lot of weird things like that. So everybody will learn, even the most hardcore people. Uh, so you should not be scared of not understanding everything. But now, I mean, if you don't have knowledge of Bitcoin, it's not the right conference. So you should have at least an understanding of Bitcoin uh, before going there. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. I, I guess some prerequisite knowledge is, is always good to have. But on, on the other hand, right, all, all we can do is accumulate knowledge, regardless of how difficult it is. Like, as long as we take it in, right, that is al already the first step. So even if you're a complete newbie, and yes, this is going to be overwhelming as hell, but at least you will have all the knowledge then at your disposal. And then the question, if you can understand that internally, is a completely different one. Right. Um, and of course, you cannot understand what you have not accumulated beforehand. Right. So if you don't, if you never start anywhere, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, and then, of course, the, the real question is how can we package this information uh, easily? And yes, it would be doable to just throw a bunch of buzzwords and then like uh, jargon at, at, like at the wall and see what sticks. Um, but that's, of course, not as, let's say, approachable. Um, but what was your experience so far? How did the speakers package this very complex information? That's a cool question. Um, okay, how do I answer this one? So the package really depends. Um, some speakers are really, really, really good at explaining things in a nice way without taking shortcuts. And I think shortcuts have hurt Bitcoiners a lot because of the terms we're using that are not the right ones. And then people get confused more and more and more. And it goes from even, you know, saying, oh, I wrote down my seed. No, you didn't write down your seed. You wrote down your mnemonic. Uh, it's a lot of things like that. And over time, you accumulate things. You don't really understand what you're doing. So dumping down a talk might not always be the right, um, the right way of doing things. Um, so yeah, that's one thing. We're, we're going to be really strict on, it has to be technical anyway. So it has to be at least, you know, not lying or not taking shortcuts. Uh, but some people are really good at explaining things. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to give names, but there are some people that just are amazing. You can talk to them and you have the feeling you understand everything about confidential transactions. And then five minutes after you're like, what? Um, so yeah. Well, uh, at least you get a fuzzy feeling and, and it feels good. Like you feel super smart, uh, like you're the Satoshi, you understand everything. But then five minutes later, like, oh, wait, no, I don't get it. <laughs> but at least for that split second, like you are the smartest one in the room, or at least you believe to be. <laughs> so you already know a couple of speakers who will be there and, and what will be the rough topics that they will cover? Yeah, so we haven't announced all the speakers. Um, it's still being announced on a rolling basis and we haven't announced any in the past like 10 days because we've been traveling uh, to Amsterdam and Malta. Um, so yeah, I think we have like eight speakers already on the website. Um, I have like 30 plus uh, talks being reviewed right now. So it will take some time uh, to figure out who is going to talk and about what. Um, for now, I know we have talks on hardware security, on mempool, on network encryption, uh, on ECDSA cryptography, so this one is Teth, um, on implementing code, specifically Schnorr, uh, on Bitcoin and how to do that safely, uh, which is also not discussed enough. People are excited about terms like, oh, Schnorr, Schnorr is great, yeah, but now how do you not fuck up everything else? Uh, what else do we have? Um, so in the review right now, things that I have and I'm not sure they will be accepted or not. Uh, there are talks around economics, game theory, um, mining, quite a few. Um, yeah, things like that. I think I'm not forgetting anything. I think we have one. Yeah, I think we have one that is still being uh, disclosed. So responsible disclosure process. Uh, so this one we cannot announce yet and we will see if it's uh, everything is implemented in time um, But that could be fun as well. So there might be some like breaking Bitcoin, but not not the JJ type 
Um, yeah, okay. So yeah, peers to see there are going to be a bunch of different topics. And, and again, Bitcoin is so, so wide and so broad that you, as you said, and the attack vectors are very specific in these niches themselves. Uh, so it requires a lot of holistic understanding. Uh, which is not going to be easy. So yeah, you're not going to understand everything, right? Um, but yeah, good, good that you bring up the uh, responsible disclosure, right? Because of course we are breaking Bitcoin, or at least trying to. Uh, and I, I think I remember that last year, uh, one actually succeeded <laughs> and did break Bitcoin. And I think there was some uh, controversy here about not having responsible disclosure or at least not doing what, like doing the best that he could have done on making sure that this breaking actually did not result in a real breaking of Bitcoin. Um, so maybe now taking that into account, maybe you could cover a bit what happened and how you try to mitigate this today or this year. Um, so this is one that is really hard to mitigate because we knew about the topic. Of course, we did reviews. Um, we had an agreement with the speaker that he would not cover any you know, zero day, uh, because that's obvious when you're a security conference, you're not there to, you know, destroy people's life by, you know, having their money stolen or something like that. Um, so we had an understanding. Uh, we were checking that responsible disclosure has been processed. Um, it was the case. So the, the flow had been released, had been, um, you know, sent to the call devs and stuff. So that was good. Uh, the patch was written, but was not merged. So that was on the way, but because it was not merged yet, we would not announce, um, and we told the speaker, you know, you are not going to talk about how to break it, but you can talk about the vulnerability. Um, and she was like, yeah, sure, I can do that. And then for political reasons, be cash, um, the speaker decided to, you know, show off and, uh, and, you know, complain about how slow was the core development process and how the patch was not implemented, although he had revealed stuff. Uh, so I understand there is frustration from the side of the speaker that did the responsible disclosure and, you know, it took too much time for his liking to be, you know, implemented properly. Um, but yeah, you're not, you know, it's not about your personal pride. Um, it's about, people's life we're talking about money here and it's not the typical money it's actually money that people who actually need it might need it for you know life or death situation reason so ruining a zero day that can you know it was a ddos type attack so revealing a, or a node crash um so revealing a zero day that can get people offline so they don't have any money in the country like i don't know iran or whatever um, if it's a journalist who need money there to cover some weird stuff um, that is actually a life or death situation. So this is actually not acceptable. Um, so how do we cover that? Well, now we are much more clear because we have a proper um, speaker, uh, how to, to, to call that, I don't know, term and condition. Uh, so they have to you know, review that. They are actually signing something now saying, I am not doing you know, irresponsible disclosure. That still doesn't prevent anything. We don't have a kill switch. We're not going to you know, jump on the speaker if you start doing something. But yeah, it's still reviewing, uh, review committee being really harsh and making sure, you know, bad things don't happen. But also the speakers has everything to lose by doing that. Um, so yeah, nobody has heard about, you know, him since because he's never going to be invited to talk to a conference anymore. Uh, not even Bitcoin related, but now anything security related. So this is not very smart to do. Um, yeah, very much so. And again, like, this is actually like a critical software that has many life and death situations. So yeah, that's no, no fucking joke. Uh, absolutely. Um, so yeah, we, we talked earlier a bit about uh, workshops, right? Um, and because this is, well, of, of course it is a breaking and there are many ways that like, although it doesn't break the protocol, right? It can still break the individual user experience. Like for example, like just random example, $5 rancher tech. Right. Uh, so are you going to have some workshops on how the individual can defend against some uh, critical situations? Um, not workshops. Uh, we don't have workshops at Breaking Bitcoin. Uh, we have a training session uh, during the week after. And also we're going to have a shared co-working space for people who want to stay. Uh, but there is no specific plan uh, for workshops otherwise. Um, regarding attacks such as the $5 wrench attack, um, yes, we probably will have talks about that. Um, so I am reviewing some around malware and, uh, you know, how you could really lose your funds by not doing the right, uh, you know, checking your sources and making sure, you know, the PGP signature of the software is actually the right one. Uh, we're going to have a 
maybe PGP signing, I'm not sure, but at least we're gonna encourage all the speakers to have their PGP fingerprints on the slides and distribute a flyer with the PGP uh, fingerprints. There you go. <laughs> so this is very important. And that's something you cannot really get on the live stream because that is editable. Uh, so you have to be there to benefit from that. Um, this may be a little bit extreme, but if shit go wrong at some point, uh, that could also become you know, the main way of contacting core devs. Um, it could become really, really important. And I think we should actually do that at every conference. Um, it, it's not there yet. Like, I mean, some people are doing it, but not many. Um, yeah, yeah, a great point with the uh, PGP signing party because absolutely this is very, very critical. Uh, so at least you should have a, a good verification of all the devs that do sign off packages, right? So if you use Bitcoin Core, then I think there are four or five uh, PGP keys that do the signing. For example, if you use like wallets like Wasabi, then you should have Nopara's key. Uh, and, and that is really important. And of course, you can download it from key service, right? But then again, man in the middle attack, right? Uh, Photoshop or whatever. Uh, so the like, classical pen and paper slip with the fingerprint on there uh, is what you should do. That is the best practice. Um, and uh, maybe, yeah, so having these slips with you and building your web of trust is really important. Because again, like right now, we have time to build the web of trust. When we need it, we have no longer time to do that, right? And so this is very much about uh, preparation, right? Yeah, and it's also, you know, real life situations. Um, it's not simple. It, people are complaining about the UX and UI of the Bitcoin related services, but this is UX for sure, um, but it's not for mainstream users and it's still very hard even for people like us um, checking that the key is actually the right one. So the signature is sure. I mean, it's be best practice already, uh, but making sure the key you have is actually the right one. This is much harder already. Um, so you were talking about Nopara, but for example, Nopara doesn't use a key server. So that's like already you have a problem there because you have to find the only source where it is and that's the GitHub. Um, so what if GitHub is compromised? You know, problem there. Um, so it's always things like that. So I think it's good to have the pen and paper. Uh, also for submitters, so people who want to propose a talk, uh, we have a process in place for responsible dis disclosure. Um, either they just tell us, you know, I have a responsible disclosure going on and I don't want to tell you about it. So in that case, we can negotiate and figure out maybe later if we will accept them. Uh, but otherwise, we have a proper PGP setup uh, with different ways of verifying the fingerprint. It's on the PDFs on the website. It's on the Twitter. Uh, it's on my personal Twitter as well. So we have like multiple sources for that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very good. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, may, may, maybe jumping ship a little bit more about the, like in general organization of these events, because they're pricey, right? They, they cost stuff and not just the venue and the hotel, but also, of course, the time of all the speakers here. And uh, they have to be flown in, they have to sleep here, they have to eat and all that. Um, and of course, on, on the other side, the, the revenue that you can get is only from the attendees. Right? or at least a big part of it. Uh, and then if you want to cover all of your uh, expenses with just the revenue of the attendees, then ticket prices are going to be really expensive. And the people who meet Bitcoin most, right, probably or don't have like money to buy like consensus level ticket prices for like 5,000 bucks, right? Um, so how do you handle that? How do you make a conference still um, like, uh, interesting by inviting good, good speakers and providing a decent venue while still having a decent price. Uh, okay, so this is a this is difficult to do as you can as you guess. Um, so the team is volunteering, the review uh, the reviewers are volunteering, the speakers are volunteering. Uh, we're buying flights and accommodations, and it's definitely not business class. Um, so we are we're making sure people who want to talk can do so, um, but they still have to, you know, spend time uh, to prepare the talk and do the talk. Uh, at least we can fly them in. So that's something. Um, attendees, uh, you're right. Um, I mean, consensus or even like many of the Ethereum development uh, conferences um, are actually, you know, targeting more like the companies, even maybe startups, but there are companies attending to talk about whatever they dev. Um, Bitcoin is not about companies. Bitcoin is about people. Um, and the people who need it, yeah, sure, they can't afford 5,000 euro to just attend a conference. So we have to cut down as much as we can on the costs. Um, a ticket price at uh, Breaking Bitcoin today is 250 euro. Um, and that covers, I think, 
I think the cost of the conference and everything around it, including, you know, the flights of the speakers and stuff, uh, is probably like the ticket price is probably covering, um, only about like a third of it. So the only way to make money is sponsors. Um, we also have like tickets for people who want to pay more to support the event. Um, so, you know, supporters, um, it's actually going well, uh, this year for that. I think we have quite a few people who, um, you know, willingly spend more money to buy a ticket just because they want to support the event. Um, and we are really, really grateful for that because this is super important and we need money to keep these things running, especially in a bear market like now, like now. Um, so yeah, we have that last year. We had also the VIP ticket. Um, it was just a few people taking it, uh, because they didn't feel the same need, you know, uh, companies are the only way of making an event like that sustainable, uh, because we need sponsors. Uh, these companies are not getting a direct return on investment. They're not going to get clients out of the blue. Uh, so we're not a conference like consensus where maybe there are a lot of buyers, maybe corporate buyers want to buy whatever, you know infrastructure or whatever bullshit you are selling. Um, this is a conference to talk about the security of Bitcoin. So nobody's buying the security of Bitcoin. Um, but this is super important. This is something that could make or break Bitcoin in the future. So these companies that are making a lot of money and I'm looking at exchange and stuff like that um, should definitely care that Bitcoin keeps being secure. Otherwise, if Bitcoin dies one day um, or if nobody uses it, uh, then they are going to lose all their revenue. And in that case, well, that was probably not the right you know savings they should have done and so we would love to have more support and they should consider this as a strategic support not as a direct return on investment but as a long-term return uh long-term return yeah uh so yeah i think that's about it um so thanks for the speaker the sponsors we already have uh, i think we have bitonic and shift crypto um announced already but we're looking for many more and this year it seems that the bear market is actually really 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 hard on companies uh, much more than we expected at the beginning. So any company that could help should. Um, is there, or might there be like a misalignment of incentives, right? That that you have companies trying to buy their way into uh, the conference in order to get special treatment for, for some kind. Um, and I, I guess this is much more a problem with like ICO shell fest, right? And as you said, like we're not selling anything here. It's, it's about Bitcoin security. But still, do you think that there might be some uh, like some problems with accepting some companies as, as sponsors? Or are you just <laughs> grateful for any Satoshi that you can get? Um, y yeah, so no, we're not accepting everybody as a sponsor. Definitely not. Um, but at some point, the, the real question will be, especially if it continues like this year, uh, imagine if it's a multi-year situation. Uh, at, at one point, it will be like, what do we prefer, shutting down the conference or accepting companies we're not really aligned with? Um, personally, well, I, I have my views on that and I'm really, really strict on what I want to do and who I want to work with. And I'm definitely not willing to work with company I don't support. So, you know, um, I don't think we should ever accept any Satoshi just for the sake of it. Um, now, some conferences, and that's, you know, typical in the conference industry, um, sponsors would get seats to be speakers or moderators or whatever. This is definitely not the case at Breaking Bitcoin. Um, I think most Bitcoin conferences are actually the same as us. Uh, they have a separate process for reviewing um, the talks and for sponsors. So for us, it's completely separate. It has no link. Uh, which is, I think, which is great. Yeah. But then, of course, some sponsors might be, you know, feeling bad because their talks are not accepted. Uh, that's life. Seriously, I have no problem telling them, you know, that's, that's not our problem. Just submit a better talk. Um, yeah. It's, you're not buying, you know, visibility in that regard. You're buying visibility by having, only thing they get is having their logo on the live stream and the live stream is going to be watched by like, what, 30,000 people for the first breaking Bitcoin, something like that. In total, not, not, not live. Um, and that's a lot, you know, that's, that's pretty cheap to pay some euro per view. Um, if that's something, you know, related to security and your company is dealing with, uh, with this space. Uh, they also get, you know, the logo on the t-shirt and stuff like that. People love t-shirts. Uh, we were seeing downstairs uh, earlier. So here at uh, Understanding Bitcoin, um, there was somebody with the very first uh, Breaking Bitcoin t-shirt, the blue one. Um, which I don't even know where mine is. So I'm like super proud. Uh, people are still proud of wearing these things. 
So having a company logo in that is actually very valuable in my opinion. But sure, it's not bringing money to the company. It's bringing a lot of visibility. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think there was another question in this. Mm, I don't remember. The, well, maybe just on, on that, what, what you just said. I think, yes, it's, it's the visibility, but I think it's also the respect. Like, for example, like Slush or, or Trezor uh, or, or you know, like Bull Bitcoin or like these like real Bitcoin companies with like good, strong ethics and, and just open source like decency. Um, when I see them like funding these conferences, uh, which of course we know they are expensive and they, we need this funding, right? Um, and it's, it's not just these conferences, right? It's also like, for example, Chain Code Labs, right? Uh, funding a bunch of open source development or, or Blockstream or, or like these are heroes, right? Uh, sacrificing their, their wealth uh, for this. And that will, that is, yes, of course, visibility, but very much a respect. Uh, and that is very needed in Bitcoin. Right, because again, we we have to uh, stick together and, and build a strong network of, of peers, uh, and I think this is a, a really really great opportunity for any company uh, who wants to, um, yeah, well get well get the reputation of being a good contributor to to the open source uh, economy, uh, because it like that's that's the thing with open source, like you don't have to. Right? You can't just use the software and be a lurker in the dark and, and never speaking up, never contributing back. But I mean, like, why, why are you in this then? Right? Uh, so I think this, this is especially important because we are such an open source space. And how, how do we like, communicate this to the companies that it's, uh, be, yeah, yeah well, how do you communicate? It's really hard. And yes, it's education. Um, I don't think it's just communication. It's really education. Uh, so the companies or the people that have been working in open source for a while, they understand how open source work. Um, it's not just free stuff. Nothing is free. You don't get free software. You get software that you don't have to pay for. But of course, you should contribute if you want to use it. Otherwise, it's going to be shit software. Uh, there will be no support. There will be, you know, they, you, you, there is no free stuff. Um, somebody has to pay for it. So companies are contributing to open source software and that's great. Uh, conferences in, in the other um, industry, or at least maybe not in Bitcoin. So let's say in the IT industry in general, um, security conferences usually do pretty well. Um, they have very, very big organizations. They say, you know, Microsoft, Oracle and stuff like that, that would throw a lot of money um, into these conferences just because this is super important for them. They're going to benefit directly from the research Ending it out, ending up out of that. Um, they also know that by supporting these companies, they are supporting the responsible disclosure. Uh, they are, they are, you know, they are supporting the white hats. Uh, they are not going to end up being like in a situation where uh, I don't know there is a crypto locker in their client uh, or something like that. So it's it's thing that they might not see in the first you know first time, but over time it pays out so much, and it's it shows in all the other industries. Maybe in Bitcoin, most of the companies are still small by first time or second time CEOs that never, you know, had uh, these kind of situations before. So sometimes, sure, it's very hard to convince somebody to give you money. And in exchange, what do they get? They get a few free tickets, but they could have bought the, free t the, the ticket for cheaper. So they're like, mm, why should I sponsor? And you're like, well, you should think about it. It's like your way of contributing to Bitcoin. Either you spend free time to help build the software or you can also contribute financially. And financially is not a bad thing. It's actually very needed as well. And that also includes, you know, supporting core devs and stuff like that, not just conferences. Yeah, exactly, right? And I think you're a perfect example for that uh, because I feel like you contribute a shit ton, right? Because, I mean, you organize the entire thing, right? So that's like the, the pretty maximum contribution that you can do is like putting this entire thing up. And of course, this is not like your only job. Like you actually have a company like Chainsmith, right? Um, so maybe just here, here a chance to talk a bit about that. So what do you do with Chainsmith and, and what problems are you solving there? All right. So first of all, yeah, breaking Bitcoin uh, right now is three people working on it. Uh, it takes us about four, four, five months uh, for the year of the year. So that's a lot of time. Um, and of course, we're not paid for that. So we're actually losing money this year. So sponsor us. Um, so yeah, that's that's you know main thing I'm doing right now. After June, uh, sure, I have time to go back to my projects. Uh, Chainsmith is a company I've had uh, since 2015. Uh, we launched it with a bunch of uh, really, really old school Bitcoiners. I was the youngest in the team in terms of uh, experience in Bitcoin. Um, and I started in 2013, which is, you know, all right. Um, so I had the OGs uh, in the team and the product, or at least the, the idea was that um, 
at the time, you know, banks and other big institutions were just asking for small Bitcoin startups to come to them and present products and stuff, but that just ended up as being free training. Um, and that was like during 2013, 2014, it was only that all Bitcoin companies were like super excited because they had a meeting was like, oh, Citibank, HSBC, whatever. Great, I'm going to buy a suit. I'm going to go tell them about my Bitcoin software. And then you would have the board of director in front of you asking you a ton of questions about Bitcoin. But in the end of the day, it's just free education about Bitcoin. And they would never buy your infrastructure because they don't need it or they don't want it. Uh, so that was the time uh, of setting up you know, services to you know, get paid for this kind of stuff. Uh, so Chainsmith does product architecture. Uh, so designing architecture around uh, Bitcoin products. Um, but most of the money is actually telling clients why they don't need a blockchain um, because it's useless. In my opinion, it's really, really bad to encourage the you know, useless use of a blockchain, uh, the smart contracts that make no sense. Anything you could do without a blockchain, you should not use a blockchain. Um, and this is valuable even for big companies because they're going to save a lot of money by listening to us and just going back to a centralized database and not using Ethereum or whatever. Um, so that makes some money. Um, and yeah, I also have a lot of other smaller projects, but that's you know, other things. Yeah, right. And I think that that's like Chainsmith is very much in line with, with like breaking and stuff that uh, we need to educate. Right? Education is first and foremost. Yes, we need to write the software for sure. But then once it's written, like who's going to use it? Right? If you don't understand it, you're not going to use it. Or if you're going to use it, you're going to use it wrongly and you're going to get yourself hurt. Uh, so the education part is huge. Um, and it's both education about Bitcoin and then indirectly also about why not shitcoins, right? And why blockchains are pretty damn stupid, right? Um, so again, as you said, that's very valuable. It really is because um, all these companies spending millions on blockchain development and like enterprise solutions and nonsense like that, like this money is actively not invested in Bitcoin in something re like really valuable, something really critical that it has actually one of the most beautiful use cases and is one of the most critical and, and useful softwares uh, that, that we've ever built. Uh, so, so educating those that like just about where to focus their time and attention is very important. Uh, so where do you see the, well, I guess, success rate of kind of sh shifting away from the blockchain to, to the Bitcoin space? It's really hard. Uh, too few companies are doing it. And some companies have way too much power, including polit political power in, in this space. Um, I'm not going to name anybody, but there was a very big Ethereum one that is uh, kind of in the financial trouble now. Um, but yeah, they pretty much had the market. So when you have this kind of people that have the support of the politicians of the countries doing you know, proof of concepts with them, with central banks doing proof of concepts with them, with EU funding, paying for research on what the right blockchain would be. Of course, like there is a lot of bias and fighting against that when you are very small companies and there are not many in Europe that do what we do. Uh, so there is us, there is BHB, there is like very, very few. It's, uh, it's really small. Um, it's tough because your clients are like, oh, you're a Bitcoin maximalist. Because yeah, even that is now in the corporate world. So I'm like, yes, I am. And I'm going to show you why. And usually they understand. Uh, you just have to explain things. And like in Bitcoin, there are very few, there are still some, but there are very few companies that are actually bullshitting. Very, very few. So people are very knowledgeable about what they are saying. Um, they care a lot about the technology. So when you ask them questions, they can really argue and they have a passion when they do a presentation. So even if it's education in front of a board, um, usually your message go much better than a sales guy that's been hired by whatever other consulting company that does an amazing pitch and has amazing presentation and PowerPoints. And when you come after that and you're like, oh, well, I didn't do PowerPoints because I didn't have time to do this, but I can talk for like four hours nonstop about why Bitcoin is better, uh, but also why maybe you don't need or want Bitcoin as a company. So I don't know. Um, then you have also the use case, you know, like the timestamps and uh, uh, proof of uh, existence and whatever. Um, that might make sense for many companies. Uh, I'm not that fond of this technology. I'm just saying it's like, yeah, cool. Um, it's interesting, but that's not really exciting. So Bitcoin for big corporations, meh, maybe not today, uh, but maybe they should think about it just in case. So there is also this debate, right? It's again, the same thing about sponsorship. It's like, what is the direct return for them to invest in a Bitcoin thing or to invest in 
whatever shit proof of concept. Um, well, most of the time, the guy who is investing in the proof of concept is not the CEO. It's an innovation director that is looking to get a bonus by the end of the year. So in four months, he's going to try to get something to put bananas on the blockchain and then he's going to be happy and try to get his bonus. Um, so it's also, you know, you have to understand how corporate world works. And I do believe that the more we move forward with Bitcoin, the more we'll get help and support and strategic support. Uh, if you look at the investors at Blockstream, for example, uh, you can be sure they're not in Blockstream for the money. They are in Blockstream for the strategic impact of it. They are like, oh, there is something there. Don't know if it's going to be successful. Don't care about making a return out of it, but I want to be the first to know about it. Um, and this is very important. And you can see that in all the other tech. Like, I mean, Tor, for example, uh, Tor is funded by big organizations that have nothing to do directly with Tor. It's just that, hey, um, this is a really important technology. Uh, Wikipedia also has like really big corporate sponsors. Why? Because it's very important. And it's a lot of things like that. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Covered uh, great stuff already. Um, yeah. Maybe then also because uh, one, one further venture that you have is, is a restaurant, right? The, the Bitcoin Cafe in, in Lisbon, right? Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I, like, I mean, I worked in a cafe for a long, long time. Still love that job. Uh, just restaurants are just great, great place to be. Um, and I think it's it's a nice fit for for uh, doing Bitcoin stuff as well, because uh, you know people have a real use case, right? They can actually buy something with this. They can actually see how it works. Um, and and uh, you also, of course, provide also meetups and and like you have the co-working space there. So it's it's not just that uh, hey, like here's a QR code, like pay me. It's actually like we're gonna explain you how and why it's important, right? Um, so, like, yeah, what is your kind of experience on there and uh, what was the feedback so far that you got? So, uh, it's called The Block. Um, it's in Lisbon and, yeah, it's a co-working space um, that had a cafe last year serving coffee shop and, like, coffee shop type coffee, so specialty coffee. Um, this year is mostly co-working space in terms of community, so people would get access and have then 24-7 access, so you always have people there. Uh, and yes, we do a lot of meetups uh, on average twice a week. I know there is one today and it's a Saturday. Um, so it's uh, actually privacy and law today. So they brought a lawyer to discuss about how to do privacy in Europe. Um, so that's pretty cool. And all of these are free for uh, people to attend. And all we expect from them is maybe to buy a beer uh, with Lightning. So that's that. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, I think we were the first uh, physical place where OpenNode uh, had their transactions. So uh, OpenNode, who is doing the, um, the Lightning payment, or at least, yeah, merchant acceptance uh, uh, software, uh, are using still most, most of the time pictures of the block uh, to illustrate their, situation, their, their business case, uh, which is great. So we're dealing with a lot of things. Um, the first Wasabi round was actually done at the block. You might not know that. No. So uh, Adam was there and using our Wi-Fi and running the very first round. Um, we have core devs showing up every few, you know, other week. Um, we had Insta Gibbs being there a few weeks ago. We had Adam Gibson coming there a few weeks ago. Um, but just, you know, randomly, they're just like, hey, I want to go to Lisbon uh, to get some sun because maybe in the UK it's raining too much. And, uh, and they just know that the block exists because, well, yeah, pretty public and pretty well known. Uh, amazing Wi-Fi and everything. And yeah, you can, you can really have a good chat there. So having spaces like that, and you have all the Bitcoin embassies and stuff like that around the world, right? Uh, these spaces are really good. Uh, this is so important to join the community. And as you were saying, um, I think early, um, you know, sometimes you don't know where to start. And, and this is super important to start with the right people. Um, now, how do we prove we're the right people? I don't know. I guess uh, the bigger the community, maybe, well, no, because otherwise uh, Tron and stuff like that would be uh, much more legit. So I have no idea. Well, um, I, I think the official proof is if you have a Blockstream satellite on the roof, right, which you have. It's so, on the way, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, it's on the way? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was already in there. <laughs> okay, then, then you're clearly are not an expert. <laughs> um, yeah, but now I, I guess reputation, right? Like, that's it. And how do you build your reputation? You don't sell shit. Right? You actually contribute to this open source space and you, and you do it in a legit way without uh, like, like shitting on, on just man, ethics and, and good practices. And again, like that's, yeah, like your life as an organizer for, for all these events is hard and it's not the most profitable. And right? I'm sure that you could make a lot more money uh, with, with like selling out and doing some other nonsense, but you don't 
right? And yeah, selling out is cool for the short term, right? But as we said earlier, with kind of like the unresponsible disclosure, yeah. Like, but then you're not going to be invited back to the party, right? But now, like, no, like we know each other somewhat, right? And we we see each other on these conferences, and I know that when I see like, okay, like he is legit, and uh, I will I will vouch for you for others, right? And I will say, yeah, you should come to Breaking Bitcoin, you should come to Building on Bitcoin because they're fucking awesome. Um, and I think that will be in the long run very, very important to have this good web of trust coming back to the P2P thing, right? Uh, of of peers in our network where we actually can say yes, these are these are ethical people who who know what they're doing and who, who are not going to sell you out on the latest shit. Right? Um, and I think the long term game for this is is very bright. The long term game game is still Bitcoin, uh, in my opinion, and everybody has their own personal reason to be in the space. Um, to me, it's really, you know, Bitcoin is really a big thing. Um, but I do see it much more fragile than most other people see it. Um, I don't think it's a success yet. I think it's there. But, you know, we could lose control over it in terms of, you know, political things happening, you know, forking in all the direction for different reasons, for cheaper stuff. Um, it could become a nightmare for the community itself. And as you know, sometimes we're losing call devs because they just can't deal with, you know, all the bad remarks they have by people who don't even exist. I mean, there might be bots, right? It's, we have to fight and we have to help each other out. And I think having real life events is so important. Um, it, it's, so talking about money, you know, it's definitely not profitable, um, but human like relationships, I mean, I've met the, the smartest people yeah. I've ever met in these conferences. Uh, this is insane. And when you meet them, it's the time you spend five minutes with somebody, you're going to earn like at least one or two hours of research you would have done online by just reading stuff from them. Yeah. It is insane. Um, it's also really good for, you know, filtering out all the noise and all the bullshit. And when you come back to the roots, um, you see that people believe in something. Uh, so for me, I really believe in censorship resistant money. Maybe if it's not for me. I don't care um, as long as, as I can help something like that. It's really a big thing. So, yeah. Oh, long-term stuff. Yeah, so long-term might not be a personal gain either. So maybe long-term is still not going to bring money, but at least, you know, we'll have something good and working. <laughs> and right, that's, it's so weird. Like, we run a full node. We are in the business of money production. But we don't give a shit about money. <laughs> it's, I, I, I think it's so weird that Bitcoiners are, are so like humble and and um yeah just like non sellouts well, most of them right and i think this it's it baffles me and i do believe that it is because like the those that do understand bitcoin now they do understand the value of censorship resistance and and freedom right and these values are so ineffably more important than <laughs> making money and than than buying the next lambo and I think because we have this very strong ethical uh, foundation on which we can build upon, uh, we can build something that is rock solid. Uh, and, and not just on, on terms of the code, but especially from the people using it, right? And as you said, it, it is still fragile, yes. Mm -hmm. And we still have a lot more work to do in order to build this out and to make sure that like, this, th this, this good energy uh, stays preserved, right? And we're going to lose it if we all sell out and, and like sell $5,000 tickets for shitcoin events, right? But we don't. And that's what makes Bitcoin so fucking awesome. And yeah, just thank you for doing your part in that. Thank you for doing yours as well. Um, I mean, yeah, so I know you guys and I know it's very, very hard for you as well to find sponsors and stuff. So um, I hope you don't, uh, well, I mean, you, it must be hard for you actually to let us talk about finding sponsors and not crashing the party because you're looking for sponsors as well, I guess. Um, so yeah, everybody's in the same situation and we need to communicate as well to just let people understand what's happening behind the scene. Um, just understand what the people are doing and who they are. And uh, yeah, maybe Bitcoin is a cult because uh, maybe you have to be really, really stupid to do what we do and be like, don't care about money, don't care about my time, I'm working like, you know, all my day and my night on Bitcoin and I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm going out. Well, where are you going? I'm going to a Bitcoin meetup. All right, cool. Uh, oh, I have a call with Bitcoin friends and I'm going to a Bitcoin conference and may I take a flight to go somewhere else, you know, CoinFest or whatever. Um, this is insane. I think this is pretty insane. So I understand why people are looking at us like really big weirdos from the outside. 
because probably we are weirdos, um, but we're fighting for something very, very important. And yeah, I mean, this has no price, right? Uh, the feeling of knowing what you're doing is right um, is really, really strong. I'm not working for a corporate being a robot for them. I'm really trying to change things. And that could be for like generations, maybe millennia, who knows? Um, yeah, exactly. And I think that just also, I think one part of that is, is Bitcoin as a sound money, right? Just the, the aspect that it decreases your time preference, um, that you no longer think for the here, no, 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 no. I want to consume, consume, consume. I want to sell out and get the 5,000 euros per ticket and shit coins all the way. Like, I don't care about that. Like, I care about the seven generations to come, right? And the children's children and children. And for them, what we're doing is so unspeakably much more important than for us. Because, yeah, I mean, if Bitcoin succeeds in the next, like, 50 years, fine, perfect. But if it succeeds for the next 500 years, then, like, the results are going to be so profound on so many levels. I think that we can't even think of that yet. Um, and, and having that like, goal in mind, um, even though it is so far in the future, uh, is, is very strong. And I think that, what, that is what makes this community so, so tight um, and, and the core of it uh, so, so, so strong. Uh, we can make uh, Halfini proud in 500 years when he come back uh, out of a uh, cryogenic uh, pony, right? So yeah. that would be cool. Yeah. It's like, hey, Bitcoin still exists, and thanks to these guys. Um, oh yeah, actually, on on his uh, very last blog post on um, Bitcoin Talk from uh, Bitcoin and Me, right? uh, he said that um, as so after like I think 2010 or so, when he realized that these uh, Bitcoin actually had some value, he said uh, like somewhat quoting here uh and then i put them into a offline device so that my heirs uh could might benefit or might might to find them valuable something like this right so he was already thinking for like seven generations right and then the very last sentence of that like fucking always makes me cry like i'm comfortable with my legacy and that is just it's fucking insane man and yeah like we we get it done and i think these heroes and uh, freedom fighters, um, not just in our generation, but in, in the millennia before us. Um, yeah, we do it for them. And it's yeah. a great conclusion. <laughs> it is, right? Um, so, yeah, Kevin, it was a, it was a damn good conversation. Um, thank you. And yeah, any last words? Where can the people find you? And uh, where, where's the Bitcoin address that they can throw you Satoshis for the sponsorship? <laughs> I actually don't know if we have a Bitcoin address. I don't think so. So they can buy a, a super expensive ticket, uh, the support ticket, and the price is free. So they can, well, it's free from the minimum. So there is a minimum and they can increase it indefinitely. So uh, if somebody is really, really rich, they can do that. Um, if they want to uh, pay in Bitcoin, there is a way to pay in Bitcoin, of, of course. Um, so yeah, where to find us? Well, breakingbitcoin.com. Uh, of course, uh, most of the info is going on Twitter. We're really bad at communication. Otherwise, um, we are giving ourselves an excuse in that because, uh, we're just saying, you know, we don't want random people to show up at the conference. We just want the cool people and all the cool people know about the conference. So we don't need to communicate about it. Um, but yeah, we kind of need to do that. So 8th and 9th of June, uh, Amsterdam, uh, well, yeah, I think uh, that's about it. Um, yeah, so thank you. And uh, I think the best way to reach out to me otherwise is to show up in Lisbon. Uh, if it's to reach out to the other people at Breaking Bitcoin, well, it's contact at breakingbitcoin.com. And uh, if you need to encrypt stuff, uh, you can send us uh, PGP signed or encrypted uh, messages. Awesome. Yes, Kevin, was a great conversation. I'm very much looking forward to breaking. Uh, hopefully, we're not going to break it too much. <laughs> and yeah, Pierce, uh, this was it. Um, probably last show of the day because uh, it was a long day. Uh, but we'll be back tomorrow uh, with more videos. Uh, so thank you very much here for joining us today and see you on the next show. Bye-bye. <laughs>